My name is Mark Hilliard. I'm a master at the Arcanum, and this is part two of infrared false color post-processing. Now in part one, we took the raw image out of the camera and converted it to a TIFF file format. We also ran it through the channel swap, which can be kind of difficult for newcomers to the process. Now, part two, we are going to go over how to actually post-process the faux color image and build that stair step that leads you into the image visually with a series of contrasting colors that act as ladder steps. All right, so without any further ado, let's get to it. All right. This is the image that we took. This is straight out of the camera. The only difference is, is this has been passed through our RAW converter, converted from a RAW file format to the TIFF file format. This was the image that we passed through Photoshop in lesson number one, where we converted it to um, a channel swap false color version infrared image. The channel swap changes the blue to red and the red to blue. It inverses those two colors. Now, let's start up Photoshop here. And this is the image after we have done the channel swap. Now, notice that the sky is now blue with white highlights of the clouds and the leaves and the grass have started to take on uh, various shades of whites, pinks, yellows. This is a normal look for a 720 nanometer infrared camera and it is from this image where we are going to start. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I like to create a series of color contrasts that lead the viewer's eyes into the picture. For this, I normally use the Nick Viviza tool. This is a filter that Google makes called the Nick Filter Set. It is a very, very powerful filter, and I'm going to start it up here. I'm going to go down and I'm going to select Nick Viviza. And up she pops. Now I'm running on a Mac. So the very first thing I'm going to do is hit the F key to make the filter full screen. Now, Viviza operates on a series of control points. And these control points are um, automated image pixel selection tools that will select like pixels of the same or a close color. So I normally will start from one corner of the image and work down. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select add a control point and I'm going to put it up in the blue sky. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the brightness of the sky and bring it out to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to try bumping the saturation up there we go. And then I'm going to copy this control point to the other parts of the blue sky. On the Mac, that's holding down the Option key, clicking on it and dragging it and dropping it where you want it. I'm just going to copy it around areas of the blue sky. I'm going to put one up here in the clouds. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but only to the white clouds in the blue sky. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to desaturate those clouds and make them monochromatic. So I will go to the saturation slider, move it down. Now notice the difference in that. Inside that circular selection area of that control point, the clouds have now gone to a nice flat white, but there's still tonality in that. So I'm going to expand the size of that control point thusly so that it will grab all of the white areas of the sky. Now I'm going to copy that control point again with option click and just drag it around to the white clouds just like that. 
And what I'm doing is I'm trying to make a more dramatic sky. Okay, big difference in that. Now to see a before and after, simply put the mouse in an unused area on the screen and click before, after, before, after. See how that works? Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's take a look at these leaves right here. We'll just add a control point to those. Now, a lot of the faux color infrared, we will have stark white leaves. I'm going to decrease the brightness on this a little bit. And you'll notice there's a little bit of uh, pink in there. So now I can go down and I can add some red to it. See that change? And if I want to shift that to yellow, I will add green and take away blue. And we shift that towards the yellow. All right, and I happen to like this. Now, when you're considering a false color infrared image, this is very subjective and artistic. If we go back to the days of the Kodak HIE color infrared film, these colors were wild and crazy, and you would never know what you were going to get. So this is a highly subjective post-processing when we work on these styles of images. Basically, the sky is the limit, and your imagination is going to lead you around. Now, I'm going to copy that yellow around this tree, okay? And I'm going to let it go at that. That's not bad. So let's move over to this next tree here. We'll put a control point on it, and I'm going to increase the saturation a wee bit to bring out some more of those reds and pinks, and I actually like that. If we want to bring out more structure, which is micro-sharpening, we simply move the structure up a bit. We can do things like add a little bit of red. See, it's a mild change, but it's, it's a good change. Now I'm going to copy that control point around to the trees that I want to have similar reds. Option click, drag it down here. Uh, let's go here and make sure we get all of that tree. And we're going to go right down to the ground with those. Okay. And back here, I think I'm going to add to this tree in the background. And I'm going to decrease the brightness on that a little bit. Okay. Uh, that looks pretty good. Now let's see what happens if we drag one of those pink control points over here to this tree in the corner. Not too much. And the reason for that is, is there's not a lot of color data in those leaves. But Viviza gives us a, a slider called warmth. And when we add warmth, it's bringing us into a, um, a bronzish color of, yellow, of uh, reds. And it adds just enough to that tree to bring something special into the mix. All right. I am going to grab another yellow. And I'm going to drop it up here and see what it looks like one up here and add a little bit of brightness. See how dark that was? Like I said, my, my point here is to create lines of color contrast. Yeah, that's not bad there either. Let's add a little bit of saturation to that. And a little bit of brightness and see if it works. Because sometimes these just don't work. Alright, I like that. And now let's grab one more of the yellows and try it on this white tree. Now, that worked, but it came across as a little too green. So we'll go down and take a little bit of green away and see that it goes right back to white. So, again, there's not a lot of color data in those leaves. So I'm going to select the warm slider and I will work with that to bring in kind of a goldish orange glow. I'm going to increase the structure for some little micro sharpening. And I am going to play with the saturation. Remember, like I said, this is highly subjective. Now we're going to move that control point around this, this tree area down here. All right. Uh, it's looking good. Now we have to, to pay attention to the um, colors of the grass on the ground. All right, so let's try yellow down on the ground. A little bit too green. A 
that's not bad. And I'm just going to drag this around. And I'm going to grab a pink one. Move down on these bushes in front of the covered bridge. And I'm going to increase the brightness of those just a bit. Uh, that looks pretty good as far as the plants go. Now, the next phase of this is the areas that are monochromatic or should be monochromatic. That is the buildings and the rocks. So I'm going to grab a brand new control point and I'm going to put it on the roof of the covered bridge and I'm going to take away the saturation. I'm going to make this monochromatic. I'm going to add some micro sharpening in terms of structure. Big change by adding structure. And I am going to copy that around this bridge. I'm going to put it on the sides over here and I'm going to drop it over here on this slightly blue tinted building. All right. Now I'm going to go back and add some physical monochromatic contrasts to this bridge. So I'll select this control point here where there is a little bit of sun on it and I'm going to slightly brighten that. And here in the corner I'm going to select that and slightly darken it. Now remember I said we were going to use stair steps of color to draw the, the viewer's eyes into the image? We can do the same thing with dark and light monochromatic contrasts as well. Add a little brightness there. And I'm going to move this dark control point over here. And see what I'm doing? I'm giving that bridge kind of a stair step. It's going to draw your eyes across it. Now we're going to do the same thing down here on the rocks of the creek. We're going to change all of this ground to monochrome. All of the rocks to monochrome. I don't want any blue tint in those rocks. Okay. I'm going to pay attention to the uh, tree leaves on this little dirt road coming here to the right of the bridge. And I'm just going to put a control point there. I'm going to brighten it a little. And I'm going to add some color saturation. And that brings those leaves out. And I'm going to put another one of those right here where there is another line of tree leaves. Now let's look at before and after again. See, we're almost through the image and, and we've done an awful lot. So now let's put the conversion to black and white in this dark area here. And let's darken that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag that dark monochromatic control point and put it there. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here under the trees. I'm going to put one here in that road. Big difference. Now, let's see if we can bring out anything in the water that's flowing under that bridge. Simply put in a control point there, brightening the water up a bit. See, it's starting to bring out some blue. Now, there are two ways that we can approach this. We can use the warmth, but instead of going positive for warmth, we can go negative to bring in uh, blues because we're looking for a blue reflection from the sky and that kind of works. We can also go to the blue slider and we can add blue that way. Now when we do this we always have to take away a little bit of red. We're going to add a little bit of structure for micro, uh, micro sharpening and then we're just going to copy that control point around the water areas. It is just as simple as that. Okay, so now let's look at this picture. Here it is after, here it is before. There is a really big difference in that. When you have it the way that you want it, then you click on OK. Vivisa is going to do its magic. And there the image is. Now this took me about three or four minutes. This is a relatively fast process that you can go through. The more you practice this, the faster you'll get. All right, that's all there is to it at this step. We'll do another video 
where we do a black and white version of the infrared image. And we do this through a set of steps. We always do the false color image first before we convert to black and white. The reason for that is, is you have more control of the black and white conversion process if you have your colors pre-done. All right. Thank you very much for sharing the time with me today. I hope that you get something from this. All right. Bye-bye.